Mary Tyler Moore was a groundbreaking actress whose show, The Mary Tyler Moore Show, set the bar for excellence in television, both for female leads and for shows in general. But before she started up on her classic show, she became famous on another sitcom, The Dick Van Dyke Show. It was a breakout role as audiences across the country fell in love with the beautiful, funny, and talented performer. But did you know she chose to wear a wig when she transitioned to her own show? In this video, we'll explain why, as well as take a look at her time on The Dick Van Dyke Show and other aspects of her storied career. Join Facts First as we present the real reason Mary Tyler Moore wore a wig for her show. Many people might not realize that Mary Tyler Moore wore a wig during the entire first season of The Mary Tyler Moore Show. And while it's not like actors need a specific reason to make a wardrobe or costume choice, if it makes sense for the role, fans have never been entirely sure why Mary made that decision. Well, according to a post by MeTV advertising their airing of the show, Mary's decision had nothing to do with the show. It actually had a lot more to do with her previous show, The Dick Van Dyke Show. Mary had become so successful and famous for her role as Laura Petrie that the execs in charge of her new show were worried audiences would think it was the same character. We can't imagine why they thought that considering audiences are well familiar with the idea of actors playing multiple roles over the course of their career. Perhaps back then it wasn't as widespread. Or perhaps the execs just assumed the viewing audience was stupid. Regardless, they decided that in order for fans not to get confused, they'd ask Mary to wear a wig for her role in her new show. There's no data showing how many people were still confused by it or how many people it helped. But what we do know is she ended up ditching the wig after the first season. So clearly it wasn't too vital for the functioning of the show. The Dick Van Dyke Show Mary Tyler Moore went from being an unknown entity to a household name over the course of portraying Laura Petrie, wife of Dick's character, Rob. In fact, her comedic skills and on-camera presence led the writing and production team to create more and more storylines and screen time for her. Laura Petrie was a multi-talented character, not only providing a stable home as a wife and mother, but also as a talented dancer and writer. In fact, Laura had a story arc that had her writing talent budding to the degree where Rob felt a little threatened by it. But the show was on during the era of classic TV, with all the classic TV tropes that often reflected society at the time. So that meant Laura's primary role was as a wife and mother. But Mary's portrayal and general charisma meant they had to find her more and more things to be involved in. This likely played a huge influence in the role of Mary Richards on The Mary Tyler Moore Show, a character that proved a pioneer when it came to women roles on TV. Moore had beaten out more than 60 other actresses when she auditioned, and reportedly almost didn't get the role after skipping her audition. But we can all be thankful she ended up on the show, not only for her incredible performance as Laura Petrie, but also for how her dynamism on screen led to the revolutionary Mary Tyler Moore Show. This video is sponsored by Kamakoto Knives, which are made from high-quality Japanese steel using traditional centuries-old techniques. The first thing I noticed about these knives is the beautiful, heavy-duty ash wood box they come in. Not only is this great for storage, but it makes a great gift for any chef or knife enthusiast. Upon opening the box, I couldn't help but admire the craftsmanship that goes into each knife. Each one is handcrafted by an expert bladesmith, a 19-step process that takes several years to complete for a single Japanese steel knife. Then, each blade is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. I had never used a Japanese steel knife until Kamakoto, but even as a casual home chef, I immediately noticed the quality was way better than any knife I'd used before. It's reasons like these that Kamakoto knives are used by Michelin star chefs all over the world. Kamakoto has several special offers going on right now and is offering our viewers an extra $50 off any purchase with the discount code FAXVERSE on top of ongoing special offers. Go to kamakoto.com slash FAXVERSE to get your knives set and help support our channel. Laura Petrie's Future over the years, many journalists have asked Mary to reflect back on her time as both Laura and Mary Richards. In 1997, one interviewer asked Mary what she thought the futures of both characters would have been after the shows ended. Mary thought that Mary Richards' life would have been much more impressive, and this wasn't necessarily a reflection on what the actress thought about her character. It was more about the life that Laura led. It was a much more cookie-cutter existence, one befitting the types seen on TV at the time. 
Moore said she thought Laura wouldn't have a spectacular life, primarily because of her stagnant existence. She explained that since Laura was married to Rob and he was the breadwinner, it would seem likely she'd live out her life primarily in the home as a wife and mother. She hypothesized that Laura might have another kid or two and then remain a great mother. She did say that maybe after the kids were out of the house, Laura would perhaps go back to being a dance instructor. In particular, she mused that maybe Laura would have taught dance to disabled people. Moore said she might have ended up doing a series of things of that nature, which she describes as being quietly wonderful. The show's ending. In an interview, Mary Tyler Moore was asked for the reasons The Dick Van Dyke Show ended. She talked about how it didn't have anything to do with the show's quality dwindling or unhappy people behind the scenes or things like that. Instead, she said it was much more about the big names involved wanting to explore other avenues. She pointed out that Dick had recently come off of his legendary performance as Mary Poppins and he was looking to expand more into films. She also talked about how Carl Reiner was writing a Broadway play at the time and wanted to focus his energy on that more and other projects as well. She said people were looking to stretch their wings in a variety of media. But she still found it devastating the show was ending. She said that while she wanted to expand and succeed in the post-show era as well, she found herself heartbroken that this important chapter of her life was ending. She said she'd even been offered the lead in Breakfast at Tiffany's on Broadway, so it's not like the offers weren't rolling in. But she likened it to a family that was being pulled apart. She'd never felt comfortable with the family of the show at first, since it was different from her real family. She likened it to being more like an aunt and an uncle. But by the time the show ended, she had grown to love the cast and crew like immediate family. And suddenly, they were all being asked to go their separate ways. Moore found this incredibly sad. She said it even extended out to the prop guys, the craft service guys, the wardrobe person, and on and on. She found that after the show was over, she missed them all, though she did admit to having these same feelings years later when the Mary Tyler Moore show ended. Clearly, Mary is someone who formed strong attachments to the people she worked with. That's likely one of the big reasons she was so beloved both off and on camera. Mary's Pants much has been written over the years about the subtle but hugely influential choice Mary made for Laura's wardrobe. Women on TV had, until that point, only been seen in dresses. It was a nod to the conservative attitudes that pervaded society, resulting in a lack of freedom and independence for women. Or, as Mary put it in an interview in 1995, the classic sitcom wife lived in a bounded set of parameters. She pointed out the wives on TV were generally obedient to their husbands and represented the classic values of loving, honoring, and obeying them. So when Mary showed up on The Dick Van Dyke Show as Laura Petrie, wearing cropped pants, it caused a huge stir. But it wasn't a casual decision, nor was it rooted in some sort of rebellious move by Moore. Rather, she recognized that the way the character was written meant she'd have the opportunity to play someone who was opinionated and had some agency. But at the same time, Laura was appealing because she asserted her rights and freedoms while never making her husband look like a fool. Moore pointed out that society at that moment was still of the mindset of, hey, wait a minute, lady, you only go so far here. And that by creating a free-thinking and bold female character, they broke new ground. Moore also admits it was helped by her insistence on donning capri pants rather than being in dresses. Mary Tyler Moore is considered a legend in Hollywood. Her breakthrough performance as Laura Petrie on The Dick Van Dyke Show paved the way for a more modern and progressive representation of women on TV. Not to mention, it made her an immediate star. She could use that star power to push the boundaries of sitcom television even more, and The Mary Tyler Moore Show is held as one of the finest examples of American sitcoms of that era, if not all time. And Moore broke boundaries using a variety of talent, bravery, and grace. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know Mary Tyler Moore wore a wig during the first season of The Mary Tyler Moore Show? Let us know in the comments section below.